the Apollo flight to the moon. That was a heady time. I remember as a young person watching those news shows of the moon landings with such excitement. It seemed like the entire world hung on every moment. I can remember it like it was yesterday, when Neil Armstrong first walked on the moon on the 20th of July, 1969, and uttered those now famous words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And as I said there, I keep picking up that there's, there's someone watching. There's life watching this, observing, noting. It feels like there's a life watching this, and it feels like the, this life might be the ones that intercept. Um, in a smaller, a smaller structure, which is moving. Uh, so I have to say it's a vehicle, but these feel very human-like. Um, we have an official NASA photo from the back side of the moon, which is the side that never faces the Earth, that seems to have an anomalous object on its surface. And it's hovering over these, or, what I see underneath that are these surface structures that are clumped together. Um, they're just, they're so close together almost. Um, and again, very peaked here. Uh, this is, this environment seems rather harsh. Now this new project conducted at the Farsight Institute employs three remote viewers who are among the most experienced and highly trained viewers existing today. Daz Smith, Aziz Brown, and Princess Jeanette. The remote viewers all describe the same thing, three totally corroborating reports. Moreover, all of the remote viewing was done totally solo and blind, and none of the remote viewers communicated with one another during the data collection phase of the project. All right, so here we have this uh, rather large, jagged, very pointy structure here, and it has this sort of shadowy inlet, this entrance towards it, that is dark and the whole environment here, it just seems very different from this otherwise reddish brown topography that covers pretty much everywhere of this desolate landscape. This is not science fiction. Told through riveting remote viewing conducted under clean scientific conditions, this is one of the most amazing true stories ever told anywhere. Yeah, it definitely feels kind of off-world. And I said it's long, it feels long, linear, but curved, white, glowing, almost ceramic, you know, that kind of smoothness to it. It feels like it's designed, you know, well designed by someone like, you know, a raw, no hard edges to it, no hard edges. Smooth, sleek, built, aerodynamic. But by the time we got to Apollo 17, NASA's final moon landing mission, at least according to the official reports, things were getting to be almost routine. Another mission, Another landing, more rocks, not so much excitement, and then it ended. There were a few more Apollo missions planned and the rockets and ships were virtually completed, but budget concerns became an issue and those last missions were scrapped. Again, at least according to the official reports. Again, just a lot of land and structures and movements, and I'm, I'm still getting these multiple surface structures here and one, one non-surface structure that looks boxy. Well, there has been tremendous controversy about that issue. There are two main points. If the rockets and ships were already built, or even almost finished, would it really make sense not to use them? So we have this structure, which seems to have more and more damage. So it appears like the, uh, the event that happened above the surface it only makes sense that the military would have its own interests in the moon. And it is hard to imagine a situation in which military minds would not insist on having their own secret moon missions. There's a non-surface structure nearby moving now to the structure. Um, it's hovering, it's, it's hovering over here, but, but constantly moving, but getting closer to the surface structure. So like it hover and it moves and then it, it drops and it hovers and it moves. And it's just like very mechanical here. Um, Helicopter-like, I guess. 
Now, military missions would never be public, of course. Public moon missions would be an anathema to the military. If there is something on the moon that the military wants to investigate, could anything prevent that from happening? So as you see the hallway over here, it extends into this circular shaped room. There's a lot of destruction and damage in that inside this room as well. There is this noticeable subject right here that is very crusty, dead. Now the black military budget has essentially no civilian oversight and it is absolutely huge. There would not be a funding issue if the military wanted to spend money on a moon mission. Also since the very beginning of the space program, the military has launched stuff into orbit and beyond. Military launches often happen at night and there is no publicity surrounding them. Defense satellites are very common up there. So no one asks any questions. One or two life forms, they get out, they kind of interact with the land and they seem to be looking around and taking measurements, observing, testing. They seem to have some kind of devices or tools that help them test. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, it seems very scientific based. Uh, it feel, feels like they're in some kind of silvery white suits. It also is of great interest to see that extraterrestrials have been involved in military matters for a very long time. Apparently the ETs fight among themselves, or at least they used to, and one can assume that they still have the potential to fight, even today. Their ships get attacked. I feel like I'm in a snow globe. I feel like there is this all around, um, you, you like it's like a snow globe looks. You have your your land, and then you have this whatever the structure inside of it is, and it's just encased. And it would seem that with the potential for such hostilities, at least some of the ETs not only fight but they also lie. <laughs> 